Thank you to our sponsor, NetSuite. Your business was humming, but now you're falling behind. Team buried in manual work, get NetSuite for when your business gets to a certain size and you need more efficient system to manage risk, get reliable forecasts and improve margins. It's the number one cloud financial system, streamlining counting, financial management, inventory, HR and more. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at NetSuite com slash idk that's netsuite.com slash idk to get your own kpi checklist netsuite.com slash idk fingernails hair which one grows faster oh that is a good question because <laughs> you think about it you're always trimming your fingernails you might find out i don't know how jim jeffries but quickly which one grows faster because you cut your hair about once yeah, every yeah. couple of months. You cut your fingernails well, every few days, Man, every four yeah. days or but so. lengthwise, your hair grows faster. I don't know. I don't know. Because you're cutting, you're cutting your fingernails all the fucking time. But you're, you would I be, know your toenails you go would, slower you're, than you're your not, fingernails. You're not cutting your hair all the time because you're not cutting it as soon as it grows. You're if cutting you're, your fingernails as soon as it if grows. you're not with me, you're against me. Against. <laughs> yeah, against. All right, you're against me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm team air. Yeah, <laughs> team air. I, I'd like to get some science on this. Right, Bring wow. us a hair fingernail. Do you think fingers and toes grow at the same rate? No, to- we. I, I learned this somewhere. Fingers grow faster than toes. That makes sense to me. Fingers grow faster than toes because the toes are always in the shade, man. Uh, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. I feel like the shade. <laughs> yeah, you get the less, shade of socks. Get less keratin or some shit. Whatever that shit is that's in Car- you. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, we got thing? some gigs. What, what, Fingernails uh, uh, grow approximately one eighth inch per month. Toenails grow slower. Hair on the other hand grows at a much faster rate. Yeah. A quarter to a half inch per month, or up to six inches per year. So your fingernails wouldn't grow six inches a year. That feels like it would. Yeah. Um, uh, um, you just you just came back from Chicago. My kind of town. You're on your way to Ireland. I'm on Ireland. Come and see me at the Galway Comedy Festival. There's three shows. Um, they're all close to being sold out at about the same level. So pick your night. They're all so it's only a thousand seater. So get in there. Might have already sold out one or two of them by now. By the time uh, the Ed podcast says, but come and see me in Galway. And and if you're Beacon not going to come and see me, go and see me mates in Galway. Uh, Beacon Theatre, yeah, man. Uh, the Beacon that's second a, and third. That's a big one that's selling well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, one of them sold out already. I think November third sold out. November second was the one that was added on. And uh, so so we're going to the Beacon, baby. Hershey, Pretty. Pennsylvania. Go, come and see me on the chocolate. November 4th. State. How's, November, how's Austin doing November 16th? I have no idea. Okay. okay. Off the top of my head. I know it's not sold out, but you can come and see me. The Austin. night before, I'm going to be at Cap City Comedy Club in Austin. And, oh. you're, and you're just going to hang around? I'm doing the shows with you. Yeah, you're going to stay, go the night before, and then you're going to come and do my shows. Yeah, I'm doing the rest of the shows. Austin, two shows in Dallas, and one in Tulsa. All right. Uh, or Catoosa, Oklahoma, but it's a Hard Rock Hotel and Casino near Tulsa. And then you got D.C., Tyson's, Virginia, December 1st and 2nd. They're all on jimjeffries.com. And there's a up. whole heap of new dates for 2024. We're, we're going to be in L.A. We're going to be in Texas. We're going to be... Baltimore, Boston, Boston, Sacramento. Sacramento. Palm Springs. Palm Springs, baby. Des Moines, Iowa. Kansas City. I'm going to Kansas City. South Africa. I'm going to South Africa. Spokane, Denver, Fort Lauderdale. It's all on Jim I'm looking forward to every single one of those gigs except for one you decide. JimJeffries.com hit <laughs> tour. Go there. And then um, IDCAT Podcast on Instagram. Follow us on there. You can see our clips. You can see announcements, things like that. Um, follow us all on there. Follow Jim Jeffries. Follow Forrest Shaw. Follow, what's yours, Jack Hackett? Jack underscore Hackett. Jack underscore Hackett. Get that fixed. <laughs> And uh, I have another podcast, the Merman Podcast. If you enjoy listening to me on this, all ten of you, then uh, go to the Merman Podcast um, with Dave Williams, and it's fun. Um, I, I want to tell a little story before we start the podcast. Okay, very small, very small. So, so last night uh, I went and performed. Jack took me, lovely boy. You've you've ever met him, it's Jack Hackett been, underscore yeah, Hackett. Yeah, yeah, spend some time in his right. middle name underscore. Spend, his, spend some time in his company. You will not regret it. All right. Anyway, so 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 Jack takes me off to do the show. I do a routine, and I do a routine. Um, the the base. I, I look if you, even if you see me perform it, uh, it won't ruin it for you right now. But the the the, the basis of the routine. You've seen the routine. I I simulate 
uh, sucking a man's cock. Right? <laughs> this is this is who God I damn am. It. This is who I am, right? Yeah. I go, I go. My wife's homophobic. Uh, she came home and I was sucking a cock, and she was appalled. Where if I came home and she was licking a vagina, I would be so happy for her. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm a tolerant, loving, and my wife's a homophobe. That's the basis of it, right? But I play it out a lot more. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I have my head against the wall and tears coming down my eyes and everything like that. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, because I go, I sucked one cock in front of my wife like this, right? And then I get in the car, Jack, a person who knows me very well, he knows my entire calendar. He he has the passwords to my bank accounts, <laughs> right? He, he goes, he goes like this. He goes, did that really happen? <laughs> I don't know where the truth starts and ends with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's stand-up comedy. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. I, I, I assumed you were joking at the end, but I don't know if the, the beginning was a true statement or not at any point. What, what, what that I sucked the cock in front of my you wife? Might, it might have been based on a true thing that happened once. I don't know. That's why I was I, asking. I'm going to let you know a little secret. And this is for future listening to my comedy, right? I've only sucked seven cocks. No, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I knew it. <laughs> I've never sucked the cock jack. I don't know if you just, experimented once. Just, no, I just take that as not as, as I just haven't. I, just, I just, don't believe you. That's why I asked. I've got nothing against people who suck cocks. I'm a big fan of them, in fact. You haven't experimented? Nah. nah not even in science class. This cock <laughs> tastes like cherry. <laughs> <laughs> <I know this. laughs> it was so funny. You asked so earnestly, hey. I want to be nice hey. about it. <laughs> Hey, just a quick question. Uh, and what if I said, yeah, it's real. I think Jack would have pulled the car over. <laughs> out. <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, I've got it out. <laughs> well, well oh, they're going to have How'd that happen? I didn't even touch it. <laughs> that only happens when you're lying. <laughs> this, this steam just came out of my ears. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's meet our guest. Please welcome our guest, Dave Glenn. G'day, Dave Glenn. Now it's time to play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Maybe. Judging a book by its cover. And then he was assassinated. Mm. That was the The way way he fell over. Uh, Dave. All right, I'm going to look at Dave. Dave's an academic. I know academics all day because they own books and not just any books, books that look like they've been read. If you come over (laughs) to my shelf, if you go in my house, I have books. That have not been read, that I put there <laughs> as almost a decorational thing about different bits of art. I've started reading them. I pull out one every now and again and have a look at it, but then, you know, I put it back and then I stop reading. But these are these are well turned books. Mm-hmm. He also looks to be somewhat of a baseball fan. We have a, 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 a sort of a pre bobble head, just a normal sized head doll, mm-hmm. not bobble. Not Doesn't like, move. Not Stationary like the, head. Not like those freakish ones with their bloody thing. <laughs> and then he also has a picture of a baseball. Is Are we going to talk about baseball? I would love to do one on baseball. No. Oh, put that on the do- put that in the diary. <laughs> the list, to the put list. that in the diary right now. I love baseball. Um, Sorry about your Dodgers, though. Oh, you know? mate. It's it, look. This is what we do every year. We get a hundred wins and then we we choke. Uh, it's it's just our it's just our way. It's the Dodger way. <laughs> um, who are you a fan of, Dave? Uh, the Kansas City Royals. Ah, uh, so, I like the know, Royals. You're, come on, <laughs> you're a plucky bunch. You, it, you won the World Series. Season. Won the World Series maybe ten years ago, correct? About ten years yeah. ago, you just won. And and I always like you in the video games because before whatever reason, the Royals are always lightning quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they can't hit, but everyone's like a hundred in speed. I don't know what they do. It's like they go out to track and field and they go, "Have you played baseball? No, I never done it. You're on the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you learn." <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, is it um, is it is it something to do with uh, academia, like real stuff, not fiction, like real, like is it uh, sort of, sort of? Okay, is it medical related? We always have a lot of medicine stuff going on here. No, no, no I don't no. think you're going to know a lot about this. You um, don't know me. Well, you do actually. It's a shame. Yeah, I do actually know you, <laughs> but. Uh, it's a uh, performance based. Oh, performance based. So is it soccer? Because they're always falling over. Am I right? No, um, <laughs> no, no, it's called, no. It's called football. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, okay, so performance based. Are we going to talk about plays? No. Uh, are we going to talk about musicals? Have we talked about? We've done musicals. We have did we? musical. Yeah. We've done musicals. Not musicals. Uh, musical. Uh, a musical. No, no, not musical. Oh, not musical. I thought he said musical. He said not musical, he said, but... Not musical. Maybe but... music. Cools. 
<laughs> the type of music we're going to be talking about. Oh, I don't think you know music. anything about. All right, all right. If it's, we're if, trying to get you on track here. If, if, it, if, it, if it's jazz, <laughs> we, we might as well end the podcast it's jazz. right now. It's it's jazz. Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> it is jazz. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I know nothing about I jazz. I bet you'll know more than you think. We'll see. I do know from MLB The Show and because Jazz Chisholm yep. was the f- cover oh, yeah. player of the game yeah. this year that jazz was invented because of baseball and he slightly explains why at the beginning it starts off with drums going and I always fast forward and there was something to do I never watched the whole bloody thing I don't I don't know maybe that's I don't even know if that's true but let me introduce jazz Chisholm says that jazz is true yeah yeah jazz was invented because of baseball give me a term jazz started with baseball oh wow okay well, hold on. So for we're the, jumping ahead. Yeah, wait for the questions, questions, Jim, but you might get a question right after That's all. That's a point all day. Um, Dave Glenn is a clinician for Jazz Education Abroad and Professor Emeritus. Am I saying that right? I always say that. Emeritus, yeah. Uh, emeritus. Emeritus. I'm an idiot. Emeritus. Oh, yeah. Emeritus is a skin disorder. <laughs> I know. I'm like, why am I saying emeritus? I've got a bad case of emeritus. But I knew I was saying it wrong. My brain was just, all right. Uh, at Whitman <laughs> College, where he was director of jazz studies and professor of low brass from 1989 to 2011. Um, he has a bachelor of music from North Texas State University and a master of music from the University of North Northern Colorado. Hmm. And he spent 11 years as a professional trombonist in New York City, where he played for 10 years with a Jerry Mulligan concert jazz band Brrr. and toured extensively with Bill Waltress's Manhattan Wildlife Refuge, Diana Ross, and Lou Rawls. Nice. And he also plays trombone on the Grammy Award-winning recording Walk on the Water by the Jerry Mulligan Concert Jazz Band. If you want to listen to Dave Glenn, um, you can check out some of his music. Uh, He's got uh, original compositions and arrangements, an album called Journeys, another one called National Pastime, and he recently released a CD, Violin Memory, with guitarist John Stowell, and you can find this music on Dave Glenn, that's with two N's, daveglennmusic.com or at orangearts.com. Thanks for being here, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. I got to say, I have a small prejudice against the trombone. I like the sound of the trombone, but I believe that it's a mean-spirited instrument. What? (laughs) Well, because (laughs) dwarfs can't play it. Why would you exclude them? Their I little, their little, that's, their little that's arms not true can't anymore. extend. It definitely was the case for a long time. Why? Have they got a special dwarf? Actually, one? actually, there was a woman named Melba Liston that was a great trombone player early on in the 60s. Did he use his foot? Say what? <laughs> oh, short. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a problem for me sometimes too. Yeah, because I always, look, I always look because I look at the school band because my son's in you know the school band. My son's ten, and then I look at the small ten-year-olds trying to do trombone, and I feel like I reckon there's notes these kids can't reach. Their arms don't extend yeah. Yeah. all the way. <laughs> it's a prejudice instrument against the short. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard instrument to start on. <laughs> How tall are you, Dev? Uh, five seven. Yeah, that, that, no, that's that's plenty good trombone height. Okay, right. that's the perfect height. <laughs> that's, 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 that, uh, yeah, just barely. Yeah, he's taller than Tom Cruise. You're telling me that Tom Cruise can't play the trombone because I won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> the next Mission Impossible. That's gonna be what <laughs> <thing>. Mission Impossible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, here's what we're going to do, uh, Dave. I'm going to ask some questions about jazz to Jim. At, at the end of these questions, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, 0 through 10, 10 being the best. Uh, Jack here is going to grade him on confidence, and I'm going to grade him on how hungry I am. Very, very. Oh, God. So I'm, I'm, going, I'm getting 10 points somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, t- I'll tell you what, the good thing about this is, the, as with jazz, there are no wrong answers. Okay. <laughs> okay, hold on. Just wait. Just wait. Hold on a second. Uh, so if we add all the scores together, we add all the scores together, 21 through 30, DJ Jazzy Jeff, 11 through 20, Jazz Chisholm. I didn't know. I was going to put him maybe at the top. Oh, yeah, Jazz Chisholm. And then 0 through 10, Jazzercise. You don't want to be that. Yeah, that Exercise. Be yeah. Uh, describe jazz music. Jazz music is a free form of music that predates rock and roll. Um, that uh, is, you sort of know the key that you're playing in. You know, whether you're playing in with a lot of minor and ma- not as much major, but a lot of a lot of minor and uh, sharp keys and um, uh, well, minor minor keys. Uh, and then it's sort of free form. You play within it. There are there are boundaries that you can all play, but it's like. 
the like like a, a primitive for, not a primitive but a primitive form of the Grateful Dead a jam band you just get together and then you can have bits in between where you can have a jazz song I'm trying to think like famous jazz songs I like, oh, now I'm just thinking like big band songs which is a different animal altogether <clears throat> but um, yeah it's free form music free form yeah man okay love that describe that jazz way. music without using words Hmm. Okay, cool. Do you know you I have any, I have a, that I doing? have a friend whose fa- whose stepfather was the Scat Man. What the Scat Man? Yeah. So his mother and she sadly passed away uh, recently. Which is an older lady, and um, she she uh, was you know married to this guy's you know uh, dad, and then then he they got divorced, and then his next bloke in his like teen years. She was dating the scat man, man. One hit wonder. Yeah, man. But uh, that's pretty cool. He, 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 he had a stutter, <laughs> the scat man, and that's why he did the scat. Oh, <laughs> other than okay. singing, he had a stutter. Only song you could do, yeah. yeah. Um, where did jazz music originate and when? Uh, I'm probably going to get told that I'm wrong about this, but I feel like it's a New Orleans thing. So I'm going to say New Orleans. I believe it's American art form. I don't believe that it was originated anywhere else. So I'm going to say uh, on the banks of the Mississippi, baby. What? When? What year? Uh, oh, about one time. And I'm going to say, ooh, real early. Um, 1915, man. 1915. What is the etymology of the word jazz? Etymology. Um, the word, yeah, where does it come from? Yeah, they're small green peas that you have with Japanese food. <laughs> okay. Um, the etymology. Oh. <laughs> what, what does that word mean, etymology? Like what's the origin of the word jazz? Oh, jazz, it, it comes from baseball. <laughs> it, it comes from baseball. Originally, it comes from baseball, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any other details? No, I know. If I... This is the thing is I play that video game like three times a week. Yeah. And if I just listen to the intro, you they're like... Waited. You had him on your fantasy team too. But, yeah, I've just chased him on your fantasy team. And, and geez, I, I'm not picking him again. Uh, he's just injured too much. Um, uh, where does jazz come from? You said it, baseball. It, it's you from, might get park credit. Par, it's from credit. baseball. It's, it, it, I did listen to it once. Well, maybe Dave will let us know. That's yeah. smart. What types of music did jazz originate from? Um, I think it would have been... Okay, so I'm going to say it's probably... There would have been music like... Like, like this, what's all the stuff that either the, Ch- the Charleston and all that type of stuff? So I, I don't... I th- maybe it jazz is a little bit more. Maybe it comes from swing music. But I feel like swing music would have been... Like, no, I'm going to say from swing. Swing music, okay. Yeah. Uh, when was the jazz age? Uh, just before the Ice Age. Um, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. What happened yeah. was, what happened was, there was a guy <laughs> playing classical music and then a meteorite hit. Right. And then and now he played every off note. It's the notes you don't hear. Ah, oh, okay. Oh. Um, what was the Jazz Age? No, okay, so I'll say the Jazz Age was 1938 to 19... I don't... No, see, I don't feel like World War II was the time for jazz. I'm going to say it was in between World War One and World War Two was the jazz age when we were all feeling a bit good about ourselves. And what was it? Um, uh, okay, so okay, now I'm going to say it's later. I'm going to say I'm going to say it's later. I'm going to say it's like the 1950s. And then I know you had big band music, but you also had like your Dizzy Gillespies and all this type of stuff. And you know you had uh, okay. What was it? <laughs> it, it was the it was the age of jazz, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like saying when was the when was the the British invasion? It was it was what it was. The age of jazz, man. If you can't hear it, Forrest. If you can't hear what I'm saying, then you don't understand it. Okay, you that, f- that this, is so much confidence. This right is there. this is a this is a answer you feel, baby. Okay, <laughs> describe describe these types of jazz like in a few words. New, awesome. No, New, New, <laughs> New Orleans, New Orleans jazz. 
Very good. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, New, new, I mean, no, new, or, new yeah. Orleans Jazz. I feel like New Orleans Jazz, they used a lot of mutes on the trumpets. <laughs> like that. Like, wow, 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 Right, that's a different type of thing. It's 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 uh, so so New Orleans jazz upbeat, mm. Kansas City jazz. <laughs> What's that downbeat? Just wait for Kansas City, Kansas. Right, I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City when I come. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I'm right. going to Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City when I come. Boom, 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 And then then New Orleans is like this. Going to Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City. Why are they going to Kansas City, New Orleans? Well, they because that. Why would you go to Kansas City if you're fucking in Kansas City, dude? All right. So That's we, the, the going to Kansas City is, is sung in New Orleans because you're taking a trip. We got other questions. <laughs> Describe free jazz. Uh, it's it's uh, every way I've listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never bought an album. Uh, no, it's uh, it's uh, without parameters. It's not a song. It's just jamming around, man. It's jamming around, and then you go, "We're doing it. In, we're doing it in this rhythm. We're doing it in this key, and let's go." And it's like you get in the piano and you go. Okay. How about gypsy jazz? Uh, that's when you do it, but then you come home and the piano's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cancel me, Britain. I'm sorry. I can't. You can't make gypsy jokes anymore. This is so. our last podcast. Nice uh, knowing you, Jim. I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry, sorry. Bebop. What's bebop? Bop. <laughs> <laughs> Should I keep asking this? <laughs> yeah. There's a couple, uh, no, a couple no, more. No. Bebop yeah. is like. <laughs> Bebop. 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 Oh, you know I went to university to study music. Yeah, I know. We can tell. It's just it's coming through. A couple couple more here. Cool jazz. What's cool jazz? It's uh it's like beat poetry we are like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, one more. One, I'm gonna ask you one more. Smooth jazz. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth jazz. Hey, you having a good time? Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, hey, if you're in your car, if you're in your car right now, and you think to yourself you're having a good time, maybe just whip your cock out and stop masturbating in traffic. <laughs> this is smooth jazz. Okay. Um, talk about next question. Talk about improvisation as it relates to jazz. Um, improv. Well, improv is the same as jazz because it's you're making it up as you go. It's it's with a structure, with a few rules, but it's it's still um, in the spare of the moment, and you feed off each other in improv. So you say something, then I recall. You say a question, then I answer. Answer question, question answer, answer question, question answer. Okay, a couple more questions. Uh, why is there improvisation in jazz music? Because that's how the whole thing's done. Because <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's improvisation in lots of music. You know, you can have a guitar solo but, uh, in rock but, or whatever, but, but they're synonymous. You have to check that word out. They're yeah, synonymous. To spell it. They're synonymous. That's silent good. P. Um, they're synonymous with um, uh, that, that's, you know, you, 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 you go up tempo and then you go syncopated. Why? Why is there improvisation? Why is there? I, I know what you're saying. I know you're describing it. I know you're describing. That's it. a Why? song, baby. Okay, we're moving on. Name, 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 name a famous jazz trumpet player. Dizzy Gillespie, bro, or Louis Armstrong, brother. Okay. I told you he gets Louis Armstrong. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know if you're getting Louis Armstrong or Dizzy. You said, okay, cool. Uh, what about? I know he popped his cheeks out, Dizzy, like this. What about a famous saxophone player? Bill Clinton, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton, I'll put him in there. That's your final answer? Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Fam famous jazz drummer. Famous jazz drummer. <laughs> Picture that guy. <laughs> A lot of them. Um, 
Uh, I'm going to say Matt Soren from Guns N' Roses. <laughs> or Tommy Lee. Yeah, okay. No, he's not a judge. Not you're Tommy you're, Lee. You're making a mockery of the podcast. Okay, Is sorry. my name on this podcast, Forrest? I don't like it. <laughs> Famous piano. I get the hate mail, not you. Famous jazz piano player. Oh. Um, yeah, that's the instrument. Some big ones that yeah. you might get. Um, Ryan Gosling in La La Land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He Ten, learned man. it. He learned it. Look, look, look. You asked this generation. That's the one that would probably. Yeah, he is famous. No, I, I, and he does I, play I, piano, but I'm not. Uh, yeah, he played jazz piano. That yeah. thing. I'm trying to think of. Oh, the guy who does the voice of um of uh, Bob's Burgers. It's John Benjamin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's no good. <laughs> he won out a whole album. I know. Um, tr- famous trombone player. Oh, fuck. Is that also Dizzy Gillespie? Tom Cruise. Tom yeah. Cruise. <laughs> From Mission Impossible 7. You could say Dave. Eight. No, Seven Dave. Three, yeah. Well, I don't. I, I yeah, don't. Glenn. I did Dave. I'll go Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll put in Dave Glenn. Last uh, question. Name at least one famous jazz club. Oh, it, it, I can name you several. Do me several. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Boom Boom Room. <laughs> okay. From the movie Life. No. Wait, wait. I'm going to say The Blue Oyster. Wait, these are real? That's from Police look, Academy. Look them up. Okay. Yeah, and, then, uh, and then I'm going to say uh, uh, the oyster. And then there'll be uh, uh, Rafferty's. Where's that? Where isn't it? You're not too cool. You're not cool enough to get in, brother. Okay, Don't worry about it. Done. Don't you worry about we're Rafferty's. Done. You ain't getting into no Rafferty's. All right. Uh, Dave, <laughs> Dave Glenn, how did Jim do on his knowledge of jazz music? Zero through 10, 10 the best. Let's see. I'll add it up here. <laughs> you're taking. Uh, you're actually taking notes. Yeah, bloody hell! Oh, no. Luckily, luck, luck, we haven't got you on here for math, Dave, because it feels like it's a pretty high school. Five. Five. Uh, Boom. Not bad. Not bad. I learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank it's 12. <laughs> and how hungry are you, Forrest? Uh, yeah, probably a uh, 10. So DJ Jazz yeah. Jeff. Hey! And yeah. you know what? You know what? Forrest is the jazz of eating. He just improvises as he goes along. <laughs> He's just like, I'm just going to go into a food court blindfolded and have to try me luck. I asked Jim to, d- to describe jazz music. He said it was a free form of music, predates rock and roll. There's a key you're playing in, primitive form of jam band. But what do you think, Dave? How's that? I didn't give him any points on that. Uh, uh, I thought that's it, where I got all my points. It did predate The Grateful Dead, but yeah. other than that, hey. that's not, not really happening. Is it after rock and roll, then? Is rock and roll before jazz? No, it's before rock and roll. No, it's before rock and so roll. But that doesn't really, you didn't really answer the question. So how would you describe so, jazz music, then? Uh, it's a combination of European melody and harmony uh, with African rhythms coming from Africa and Cuba. And uh, there's a lot of improvisation, which kind of falls into what Jim was saying. And then um, it's a lot of call and response, yeah. which cool. he also mentioned later on, yeah, which is good. Yeah, I was impressed by that. That's so. something I, I remember now, because I, I did study music at university. <laughs> I remember now call and response as being a term we used all the time. Yeah, you, said, you, said, <laughs> you said at the very end, I put in the notes, I was like, oh, call and, re-, yeah, you said call and recall, but same thing, you know, so I was yeah, just like, yeah, it was close enough, but uh, all right, so Europe, I didn't even know, you. I was, yeah, I would have guessed like, I know the Africa and Cuba thing, but yeah, actually yeah. from Europe, right? So in like Salzburg and all that, right? So like Mozart, right? No, it's just uh, uh, dun, 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 Stop. 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 Classics. Yeah, they played like all the swing music, but with like a techno y beat and it had like a bunny dancing around and shit. Uh, yeah. Check <laughs> out check out some jive bunny, man. Uh, you won't regret bunny. it. Yeah, stop saying that. Okay. <laughs> Describe jazz music without using words. Do you want to do this, Dave, or just leave that for Jim? Uh actually he he was pretty good on that. I gave him a one. Oh, okay. Uh, boom, 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 work on your time. You rushed. 
Ooh. No, Other than that, you were great. You don't know that I was doing it in a six twelve, and then back to a four four. <laughs> What's a six twelve? Is that, these an, are all, is that these an actual are, measure? No, are, I know yeah, four four. Is, but... Yeah, yeah, six twelve. Uh, no, nah, of course it is. <laughs> there is no such thing as a twelfth note. <laughs> Your business was humming, but now you're falling behind. Team buried in manual work, taking forever to close the books. Getting one source of truth is like pulling teeth. If this is you. You should know these three numbers. 36,025, one. That's 36,025, one. 36,000, that's the number of businesses that have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25, hmm, NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind, so you can get customized solutions for all your KPIs, their key performance indicators, in one efficient system and one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need in one place. NetSuite is so easy to use, I can use it. What? No, I'm not kidding to you. I can use it. Yeah, and you're, I've not used good, it. you're not good at using things. I'm using not, you're, I, you're hopeless. Yeah. I'm not good at using my hands to count on, right? <laughs> but I, I can use NetSuite. It's got all the information you need in one space. It makes it a lot more reliable. I, I, I risk less. I've improved margins because everything is, is spread out for me where I can see it right away at the same time, right? When I'm selling me comedy albums, uh, different types of merch, uh, Jack's Body, Anything I want to sell <laughs> and have sold, I do with NetSuite. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free. Absolutely free at netsuite.com slash IDK. That's netsuite.com slash IDK to get your own KPI list. That's key performance indicators. Netsuite.com slash IDK. So where did jazz music originate when? Jim said New Orleans around 1915. Uh, that's pretty close, actually. It did originate in New Orleans. Uh, and it was right around the turn of the uh, century from the 19th century into the 20th century. Yeah, and why was it New Orleans? Why did it originate there? Like, well, you got to be born well, the banks of that's, the Mississippi. Well, that's buddy. an interesting story, but I'll try to make it short. Um, in the 19th century... Uh, people of color started, to, there was more of them than the whites. And, and because of that, the white people in government- we, I like to be called people of, of no color. Don't call us the whites. People yeah, of no color. exactly. Uh, and they enacted uh, legislation that lowered the status of a, a group called the Creoles of Color. There were merchants and, and really an upper middle class. And they they put them together with a group called the Uptown Blacks, which which- were more uh, servants and stuff like that, and um, and even slaves at that time. But then uh, towards the 19th century, then those two groups of people had been together long enough so that you ended up with uh, some of the European tradition music that came from the Creoles of color and a lot of the African uh, tradition that came from the Uptown Blacks. And that's, that, that melding uh, was generally the beginnings of things. And there was a lot of uh, instruments from the leftover from the Civil War and brass bands and stuff like that. And live music was really a big part of the whole culture in New Orleans. So yeah. uh, you, you ended up with a lot of uh, dancing and partying and stuff, and you needed people to play music for that. So, oh, that's quite interesting. So, the Civil War happens. You would have had a lot of trumpeters and a lot of drummers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so military you, bands. You had all that that military stuff laying around. So, that's why they were using more of that stuff and not like stringed instruments, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and so, so I, I, you said it. Can you just repeat it again? What was the, the king of Creoles? Because I, I know the Elvis Presley movie and I've always Creole cooking and all that type of stuff. But what, what I, I've never questioned what that is. What, what did you say they were again? Well, Creoles are a mixture of French and Spanish. You know, French and Spanish got together and it you know, they get together and form families, and uh, then you got people of mixed heritage. Yeah. Uh, the Creoles of color uh, were more uh, French and uh, blacks, 
uh, free blacks. And uh, those, a lot of those were like uh, offspring of second families of the white ruling class. They would have their white family and then they would have their mixed race family mm. because they would have a mistress on the side. And it was kind of an accepted part of society at that time. The good old days. What, what, what ended up <laughs> happening was the yeah. offspring of those unions a lot of times uh, went off to Europe and studied music in Europe. So they came back with all of that information and a lot of you know, culture and a lot of education. It was only until uh, the whites felt threatened and started enacting Jim Crow laws that, that that reduced the status of that class. So it feels like the French had, what would you say the French are the biggest European influence to jazz? It feels like that's... Mm, the maybe the french and the spanish but they were but the they were the most influenced to harmony and melody cuz i mean when i think of spanish music i think of like flamingo guitar and the loom and the, like the um that dance with the rose in your mouth where you flick up your skirt and all that type of stuff yeah. what's that one called i don't know tango. the tango right i think of the tango and then when i think well, of tango's fr from argentina Ah, that, well, that's... then I don't think anything. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't know. Sorry. Lyrically, oh, that's all I think of French people. Fair uh, Jacques. Yeah. <laughs> I think no I love New Orleans. I would, I would, if if I could work there, I would live there. That's like a great city. You, know, you, don't, you don't think you could work there? there? Because really, uh, harmony comes from Bach and Beethoven. Uh, you know, it's just regular functional harmony that's then been you know, adapted. It's adding, but but it came through the French and Spanish cultures that also were heavily influenced by uh, the German composers, you know, uh, Bach and Mozart and Beethoven and all those guys. Let's get on to the, I just want to, okay, so, so it starts off, turn of the century, in New Orleans. How does it start to spread and, and where do people start playing it? Is it in the clubs or is it just uh, at home for enjoyment? What, what, what's the origin of, of the, the build-up of the, of the art form? Okay, yeah, this is another interesting story. Uh, first of all, in New Orleans, as I said, there was live music was a really big part of the culture. So a lot of it was for dancing. And that kind of led to improvisation because they needed to stretch tunes. Um, then uh, it moved from New Orleans to Chicago uh, because uh, the red light district in New Orleans was closed down because some prostitute killed a sailor. So a lot of the New Orleans, they once the red light district closed down, that reduced the, the gigs and the, the New Orleans jazz musicians like Joe Oliver and, and, and eventually Louis Armstrong moved from New Orleans to Chicago. And that became a big hotbed because um Chicago was ruled by Al Capone, mm. you know, and so they, there was a big red light district and all kinds of gigs and stuff in Chicago, dance halls. And, and then later it moved from Chicago to Kansas City because Tom Pendergast was ru <laughs> ruling Kansas City at that time. And, and that had a thriving red light district. So yeah. it kind of needed <laughs> a nightlife to make it work. And um, so it thrived through prohibition and all that type of stuff like it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it thrived yeah. through prohibition because they found places that were still open and uh, drinking established speakeasies and stuff like that. And and uh, so it was, remember, this was before, uh, event, when it started out, it was before radio, uh, certainly before TV or, you know, even recordings. Uh, the very early recordings were 1917 or so. But there was music happening in New Orleans even before the very early recordings. Oh, wow. And then... Uh, and so that was the form of entertainment. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Yeah, the mob and, and the, the and so yeah. if it's before recording, so other music had the privilege of the privilege, but the other music had I'll say privilege of having sheet music, right? So with jazz music, because it is so free formed and all that type of stuff, what did the sheet music look like? Did it just have sections in the middle where it just goes, and then you improvise from this this bar to this bar, or or, or what happened there? Because like if there, well, I'm just saying if there's no recordings, how did we pass the information on if not with sheet music? Uh, oral, orally, uh, this is we're talking about really early jazz. There wasn't any, there was very little sheet music probably. Although you know some, like I said, some of those uh, people like Jelly Roll Morton or 
uh, you know, uh, early jazz musicians, some of them were trained in European traditions. So certainly some of that was written down. Lil Hardin, who was married to Louis Armstrong for a while, she was she was a really good composer. And she wrote things down, but largely it was just learned by ear. And then, uh, you know, in, the, in early jazz, both New Orleans style and Chicago style, there's a lot of collective improvisation. And that's why uh, you, you're you just kind of making it up as you go along. But it's within a structure of the tune. Uh, then when you get into the swing era, that's also called the big band era. There's plenty of written music there. And from that point on, there's a lot of written music. Do you, do you think the swing area is is very closely related to the Big Bang, like to, to, to jazz? Like it's the a, same thing. It's the it's same really thing. The same okay, jazz, it's the same yeah. thing. It, oh, that is counted as jazz. Okay, all right. Well, um, and then the etymology. What, oh, sorry, what was yeah. the what was the first big hit? First big hit. Well, hmm. What's well, like Good the record? Question. Like everyone, everyone can go back to like the first rock and roll hit was, um, you know, like you get, I don't Little know, there was, there, no, there was Bill Hay before that, Little Richard, and then there was um, they, I, 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 it was some Beatle documentary they talked about it, but um, but like what was like when it, was there a saint and did he march in anyway? <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, actually, the probably the most influential recordings of early jazz or the hot five and the hot seven records of Louis Armstrong. And th those are go back, go listen to those. They're fantastic recordings. They're really amazing playing and uh, some really amazing pieces too. And jelly roll Morton and the hot red peppers. They're really good too. And that's, that's in the early twenties or so. So I'd say that in the mood is the oldest song that still gets played where people get excited when they hear it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're even in a bar and the da 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 ah. you go, oh, you sit up a bit. <laughs> oh, fucking in the mood. And you want to know why? Because you know I, the name I, of it. I think it was about fucking. What, in the mood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's, 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 about, yeah. In the mood, she's up for it. Da 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 da. She's yeah. well up for it. Da 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 da. <laughs> I've taken a blue pill. Da da da. <laughs> Do you know who composed that song? Uh, uh, that I, would I've be got an interesting story about in the mood. That'd oh, yeah. be the Miller, uh, the Miller band. About Miller. one of the weirdest gigs I've ever gotten was playing for a guy's funeral here in Walla Walla. Mm. And they just wanted me to play solo trombone in the mood, which is a big band. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it was a ridiculous. When, when request, they, when they sent you that anyway. email, they just wanted a bloke to masturbate in the corner. They're just like, I want, I want solo trombone in the mood. <laughs> All right. Wait till you did the game. I think it was the, the dead man's joke to his, his relatives. <laughs> did, did, you did the gig, though? Or, I did the gig, yeah. Yeah, of course. It was a it was a pretty funny gig, actually. A, 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 a friend of mine, I, I wasn't able to go to the funeral, but um, he died um, in the last year, a couple of years. Um, and uh, as his coffin was going away, he had "Burn Baby Burn" by Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, who did "In the Mood"? Who who? Wrote that song. Glenn Miller. Glenn, Glenn Miller, Miller, the Miller band. band. Actually, get another thing is the Miller band. I didn't know that. If I knew that swing was jazz. Yeah, you didn't know. Then I'm point. You kept saying it I, came from swing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why you didn't get the point. Because <laughs> you didn't have that. But, uh, but so uh, it turns boom. out you like jazz. You like some jazz. <laughs> what is the etymology of the word jazz? Jim said comes from baseball. That's all you need to know. There's no other, no other facts needed. Comes from baseball, baby. Yeah. Uh, it, it was first used as a term to describe uh, an energetic style of playing baseball and a uh, lively, lively player like, you know, uh, well, like Jazz Chisholm or, or uh, the guy with the Diamondbacks, uh, Corbin Carroll is yeah. a good example of that. And it was first um, coined by it, it was adapted Scully to jazz in in, well, a couple of ago. a couple of years later for to describe a Chicago jazz musician. I don't remember who that was. And then from that point on, it started being more associated with music. Isn't it true that jazz really did originate from Utah? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, well, like I said, I'm learning all kinds of yeah. things. Like, like, like the Utah Jazz, out of all the sporting, you're talking about the basketball, yeah, the basketball team. Oh god! <laughs> out of all sporting teams in the world, I know they probably they came from New Orleans, did they? And then they got moved. Yeah, they tra they were no, they, 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 they had to have come from because. <laughs> Just have a name change. 
You come from New Orleans, where the jazz. All right, that's great. And then we're moving to Utah, the whitest Mormon bloody non-jazz. They wouldn't. You wouldn't find a jazz bar in in Utah today. Maybe, maybe. Well, well I've played a jazz Lakers. club in, in Salt Lake City, but but that was a long time ago. But I, <laughs> and there's not that many. Yeah, they, you're they, right. That's not a it's not a good name. How about yeah. the Utah Gospel Choir? Yeah, yeah, the the, the, the Utah <laughs> door knockers. <laughs> Well, the, yeah, Lakers, the, the Lakers used to be in Minneapolis, and we have yeah, no lakes here. That's yeah, they're, yeah they're, there's they're, another one. They that's, have the Great Lakes. No, no, no. Example. Look, look. America have done a lot of stupid things. Like I'm not just <laughs> name <saying> one. <laughs> ah, slavery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got me this time, history. <laughs> history once um, again. Uh, when was the Jazz Age? Uh, what was it? Jim said it's the age of jazz. Idiot. That's what he said. Yeah, you the know, 50s. Yeah. Jim, you came, you you nailed it for a brief second, and cool. then you moved away from it. That's, a, that's like making love to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. <laughs> no, it was basically from 1918 to 1929 uh, between Worlds War One and and Two. Oh, you had it. Yeah. All right, so that was that was because we were a bit more cheery. Because it was it because the war's over and things were just yeah the war the the war to end all wars is over and then everything was cool until the stock market crashed in 1929. I love the mm-hmm. world that ends all wars. It's such a the, the Great War they called it because they thought we'll yeah, never right. we'll never do one bigger. <laughs> we'll never do one bigger. And then just like a, like a decade and a bit later, they're like this. Oh, this one's this one's very big. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be bigger looking, than the great not looking one. Looking good. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, describe these types of jazz. New Orleans jazz. Jim said very good mutes on the trumpet. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. it does feature plungers, plungers often. On, plungers. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of collective improvisation in New Orleans jazz. Uh, you know, and it's that's standard tunes. It's great stuff. We can jump ahead to the improvisation, though. So, like, since that's it, that's related to New Orleans jazz, um, why is there improvisation in jazz music? So, yeah, I think. Well, you know. originally it was to stretch tunes because <laughs> uh, you'd get on the gig and you only knew so many tunes, and they want you to play all night long, and the dancers wanted to dance longer to each tune, so you started messing around with a melody. F- a little bit further each time you went through the form of the tune and before you knew it you were improvising off of the it started off improvising off the melodies of the tunes it only was later on that the people started really getting into you know learning about chord progressions and and thinking modally and things stuff like that although you know Louis Armstrong and Jelly Roll Morton and all those guys certainly knew tons about harmony that's um, but, oh, sorry. I was saying that's kind of why my stand ups so okay, so so a lot of so when I was starting out in stand up, all the American comics were trying to shorten their stand up to do a four minute set on Letterman or Leno or whatever like that. And I was mm-hmm. try, I was trying to do the Edinburgh Festival where I had to do a new hour each year. So if I had twenty minutes of material, I tried to stretch it out as long as possible. That's why like the wheelchair muscular dystrophy story is thirty minutes long. Yeah. I didn't have much of a show that year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There you go, you're jazz. I'm the jazz of comedy, man. Yeah, yeah that's what. Oh, that's that's my new poster. Yeah, <laughs> Jim, Jim, you did really say something important with regards to that, though. You said they did it because it was fun, mm. and that's absolutely right on target. It's just about the most fun thing you can do without getting in trouble. All right, if you're playing a song, you're playing the drums like this, and there's a good-looking girl on the dance floor, you don't want her to stop dancing. Keep yeah. bloody going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how I know what happened. It was girls. <laughs> that's the answer. That's the answer to every yeah. question on this podcast. Girls. Oh, I throw a lot of solo breaks in my band when we play. I go, you go, you go, you All go. Right, so 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 young Jack here is in a in a band. It's uh not called a jazz Doohickeys. band called the Doohickeys. It's a it's a country band. Well, how do you describe yourself? How do you describe Cheeky it? Country. Cheeky Country, right? Cheeky oh, cool. Country. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say yeah, tolerant country. <laughs> <laughs> Woke. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so so Some bit, humor, bit, humor, and yeah, a bit, bit of, yeah, I'd love to hear it. No, they have got a bit of fun to them. Oh, you can, you can, you can download, a, you can learn a doohickey song, 
and okay, uh, I'll and check it out and sure. so so Jack, uh, you reckon you play long guitar breaks and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I, I have a pedal steel guy with me, so I'll throw to him. He's a wizard; he can play anything off the top of his He's head. Good. And Jack plays a song so long that the girls decide not to sleep with him. <laughs> That's what it felt like at our last show. We might have got a little too long. <laughs> we finished two minutes earlier, but she's like, oh, i got to get to bed. Gotta get going. Uh, I was fine five minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> They've turned um, the lights on. They're sweeping this place up. Um, so that's why improvisation was. Okay, and that's like more related to New Orleans jazz, the improvisation, or it's all jazz? Well, it started in New Orleans, but it permeates jazz. There was probably a little bit less during the swing era, the big band era, because you had so much uh, music dependent on arrangements and stuff. But even during then, you had a lot of solo space for people. Mm -hmm. And then you had bands like Count Basie and Duke Ellington and Cab Calloway that that uh, opened up a lot of space for for uh, improvisation. So there's a lot of really great improvisers during the swing era. It feels like jazz more than any other musicians. They they rock out the uh, the nicknames. They love the nicknames. So you got your Dukes and your Dizzies and your, you know what I mean. Like so, why? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's probably related to just the way that um, jazz musicians and kind of uh, hip people in general start to to manipulate language, come up with uh, different terms. And so, so, know? so we go to jazz, and then the jazz into the swing bands. The swing bands. When does the blues come in? Because the blues is sort of slightly more closer related to rock and roll, and then to like what Elvis was doing. You know, like that type of era stuff. Um, am I right in that order? Uh, not really. Blues predates jazz. Really. Oh, really? I mean, the very beginnings of jazz originated from uh, street vendor cries and field songs and stuff like that. And then that morphed into both blues and ragtime. And then blues and ragtime morphed into jazz. Oh, and know. blues existed kind of as an underground thing all all through that time. Robert oh, so Johnson blues, and okay. Led Belly and all those people. Uh, and then the, the early rock and roll guys got hip to that and started, you know, developing that. And and you you probably know more about the history of rock and roll than I do, so I'll, I, I'll I, leave it at that. I don't I don't like ragtime. I just stay away from your wife. <laughs> Uh, next question. Um, Kansas City jazz is almost the blues. Can get a lot of drumming sounds. Yeah, Kansas City jazz. Uh, it, it has a it's blues oriented for sure. Uh, one of the hallmarks to Kansas City jazz is uh, was a, it was had more improvisation, and it was based on what are called riffs, which are short melodic phrases that are repeated. And sometimes, like with Count Basie's band, they would just make up two or three riffs and then play them against each other and it ended up being counterpoint and that's some of their arrangements were nothing but that and vehicles for the soloist to play because he always had great soloists and then uh, and he he came out of kansas city even though he he grew up in new jersey he he made his name in kansas city and then moved, later on moved the the band actually he was the piano player with a, a band led by a guy named benny moton uh and uh, when Benny Moten died on the operating table, and that's another interesting story, um, uh, then the, uh, the bass player, Walter Page, became the leader of the band. But Walter Page was kind of a dictator, and the, there was a revolt among the band members. And Bill Basie became the leader of the band after that, and everybody loved uh, Bill Basie, Count Basie. And then he moved the band to New York to get more exposure and more recording and stuff like that. And the rest is history. What is the uh, drug of choice historically for uh, jazz musicians? I was afraid you'd answer <laughs> ask that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a cop, uh, you know mate. that actually it started <laughs> off with uh, weed, you know, and then you know after World War II, like in like a lot of places, uh, heroin really got into the whole community in the 80s cocaine was was there for a while but i think now it's pretty clean yeah yeah well, yeah I, 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 was, I, was it louis armstrong who did a whole thing about weed he even said songs about weed how much he loved weed 
I don't he know. loved wheat. Yeah, he was he, he was mad for wheat. <laughs> uh, and that's me Maybe and, we'll talk about that later. Me and <laughs> me and me and Louis Armstrong have a bit in common. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you love trumpets. Free jazz <laughs> is that like without parameters? Free jazz? No, I said it's it's how uh, I listen to it. That's a that's a tough one. Answer. A lot of times it is without a set chord progression. A lot of times it's played without a chord instrument like a piano or a guitar. Oh. Uh, like uh, Ornette Coleman's group was uh, alto saxophone, trumpet, bass, and drums, and that kind of opens things up. And they would improvise off the melody, or even off just the the vibe of the melody, and then to kind of take it from there. Mm. Um, some usually there's tempo and uh, you know a, a rhythm, but sometimes that's even missing. It's it's just varying degrees of of freedom that, and a lot of just interaction. And again, a lot of collective improvisation, which actually, you know, as I said, came from uh, New Orleans days and then kind of disappeared during the swing era. But when we get to free jazz, that that comes back into play. Now, if you're a, a novice to jazz like me, with very, obviously very limited knowledge, um, name the three albums that are the quintessential albums that if if someone's listening to this podcast right now should go and buy and listen to these albums. What are the what are the the, the Mount Rushmore albums? That's a great question. I would start off with uh, one that Jack and I t or Forrest and I talked about yesterday. Kind of blue, Miles Davis, nineteen fifty nine. I mean that's that's a, a really good starter recording great it's a great yeah. recording yeah. and it's very easy to listen to it there's a lot of clarity but just extreme art i mean it's of the highest quality um then it becomes into personal taste i love uh the miles davis gil evans collaborations especially porgy and Vest, because that those tunes are so good uh and the great great arrangements um you know there's an album that that maybe isn't recognized as a as a landmark album and it but it's one of my go-to's is is an album with uh, bill evans and cannonball latterly called know what i mean and it's just it's just great you know i love cannonball Adderley's playing so that's kind of where i go but th there's a lot of them. the real mccoy mccoy tyner uh speak like a child herbie hancock uh you know uh, speak no evil wayne shorter that's a great album everybody's really on that yeah. on that recording i, I used to I was I was telling um, I was telling Dave yesterday when I worked on your show writing I would put on Kinda Blue to mm. start writing like because it would just like I had listened to it so many times but just it's like very inspirational that album so I would just like mm. start right even if it was writing about whatever but that's a great album so that, you can't go wrong there a um, couple more jazz types here uh, bebop. He said the scat man. Jim knows the scat man. <laughs> that wasn't too far off. Uh, I don't know, yeah. man. I know the scat that's, man. It's scatting. Oh. When did Jim? When did the bebop era happen? Um, I was saying, bebop, bebop would have been uh, the nineteen forty-two to nineteen forty-nine. Ah, oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, maybe got into about the mid fifties. Yeah, uh, but it was dying or, out, or even later. <laughs> and it's uh, bebop is kind of the the. Uh, uh, it's the basis for both cool jazz and hard bop. Um, yeah. But it, it's a result of uh, it coming out of World War II. Uh, uh, during World War II, there was uh, gas and rubber rationing, so the big bands, and, and plus a lot of people were in the service, so big bands started to dissipate. And by the end of World War II, the size of groups had been reduced from big bands to small groups. Even Count Basie had a small group for a while. And um, and so there's a lot more room for improv improvisation. And then uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie and to some degree Thelonious Monk kind of came up with so, some new musical language out of that. And uh, that, that was, and also Kenny Clark and Max Roach on drums, just their rhythms they came up with really, uh, Kind of moved it in a different direction, a little angrier, a little more art and less for dancing, you know, more club music instead of dance hall music. Now, everybody you've listed has been American. Is there ever like, okay, so you, you've got like the Rolling Stones are arguably a blues band, you know what I mean? Like, and the Beatles sang Kansas mm -hmm. City, and 
Uh, was there anybody of note to come from overseas, or was it all just an American thing? Oh, well, there, yeah. Uh, the next question, I think, was gypsy jazz, and that was uh, really a term that was describing uh, Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli from France. So, And a lot of uh, American jazz musicians moved to Europe to escape discrimination so there was a lot of cross-pollination that happened with europe for sure yeah because europe never and, that, had any and then later on you have all kinds of <laughs> as the world got smaller once jet airplanes became you know uh in use then the world got a lot smaller and there's a lot more uh interaction between people from south america from africa from india japan you know Australia has ever been in Australia? Australia, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, Australia. There's uh, a great uh, <laughs> trombone player. And Dizzy Gary. Player. He plays both of them. James, James Morrison, have you ever heard of him? I, Man, he's okay, James, killing. James Morrison, the trumpet player, right? Yeah, he's great. Okay, yeah. for what? He also plays great trombone. For, for whatever reason, he has like really sort of pursed lips. Like his, his face goes red and he, he, reckons he, he reckons he's bled from his ear once hitting a high note, but that just might be a bit of mythology. But he, he was um, really, really big sort of late 80s, early 90s in Australia. And for whatever reason, the music teacher at my school, and I just went to a normal public state school, um, knew him, and they and he did a concert once at our school, what, at, at, mm, like the cool. height of his fame. And and I have seen him perform when I was maybe thirteen years old. Wow, cool! So, what'd you think? Ah, oh, look, mate, I can't remember when I was twenty-seven years old. But, <laughs> but I, 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 I remember, I, 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 I remember having a good time. I remember, like, because you know, I think at that stage I was playing trumpet in the school band or something like that. So you know, I, I, I found it very interesting that he could hit so many top notes and just the dexterity of the man and all that type Amazing. of stuff. And he Facility, always, yeah, yeah, like, Great like technically a very like. Very, yeah. very good player. Um, yeah, oh, well, it's funny. I, I, I didn't think – I haven't thought of James Morrison for a very long time. Yeah. But uh, so, You know, there's a guy that's a good friend of mine uh, that I played with in New York named David Dave Panicki, mm -hmm. and he's a really good trombone player. He's, he's Australian and moved back to Australia. So if you get back home, look him up, man. He's is, a very funny cat, too. Is Great there, guy. Oh, when did you all start calling each other cats? Because I <laughs> I do that every now and again. Yeah. I go, he's, oh, he's a funny cat, that fella. Yeah. Right? And I've sort of... You know when I started doing it? Well, I think I heard George W. do it once. You know, yeah, yeah, cool cat. Like, George W. Bush will say the word cat. Hep cat. Every, yeah, every now and again. And then I... Look, I'm a big... I lived in Manchester for a long time, so I say the word man a lot of time. A very, like, sort of Manchester-y type of thing. Like, yeah, man, no man. Um, and so I say man a lot. And then I started working cat into my vocabulary, but I don't know if I've ever really, truly carried it off. But I will throw a cat in and out. Where does the term cat come from? That's from a beatnik uh, language, I think, or the, you know, right after World War II. Maybe hey, man. even predated that. I don't know. But hey, but that's where it really became famous. Like, like uh, There used Flanders to be parents. this funny album called uh, uh, How to Speak Hip. And it was formatted <laughs> like a Berlitz uh, language course, but it was all tongue in cheek. And and their their common uh, thing, they said, if you want to speak hip, start the the uh, sentence with the word like and end it with man, and you can say anything, and you still sound hip. <laughs> I, I, like I'm like I got to go to the grocery store, man. Yeah, yeah man. You, know? yeah. you got it. What, what do you do if you see a spaceman parking it, man? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what's the guy? Because Jim just reminded me this when he said high school. I think I think he went to my high school. He definitely played for us in high school. The Peanuts guy. Oh, uh, Vince Guaraldi. He plays the Peanuts. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Vince Guaraldi, piano player. He was that, the guy that, that wasn't was his name. Too. Maybe he just played it. Schultz. George something. I don't. Play Alf. That. George W. Winston. Is it George Winston? George. Is, that, is that a guy? Oh yeah. <laughs> Even better yeah. than a cigarette. Is he no good? <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a George Winston that was kind of a easy listening. Smooth jazz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was sort our, of jazz. That was our next thing. Smooth jazz. Is that what is that? Was that what that is? Smooth jazz? Like Jim just set, started talking like this. Yeah, actually, Jim was pretty close. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, that, I gave him a point on that. <laughs> you, I don't know about the the part of it, but uh but right. definitely, you know. 
driving down the, the highway and all that. It that's it's more of a I don't know. It's hard to describe. It came out of the fusion era, but it's kind of a lighter version of fusion. Mm. So there's a lot of euphemisms, right? A lot of uh, euphemisms, as I say, in the moon and stuff like that. Um, what, what was getting your kicks on Route 66? What was what was my kicks? What was I meant to be getting? I think that was rock and roll. No, yeah, you get your the kicks. The song was that. Get your kicks, Route 66 is definitely jazz, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's a blues tune. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's been expropriated by jazz players for sure. I don't oh, know. The jazz know. people That's appropriate it. I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, Western Swing definitely like have done that a bunch. Um, was there anything else about improvisation you wanted to say? We kind of skipped ahead there, but I don't know if there was anything else as it relates to jazz. or. Well, we I, I, a common misconception is that we're just making it up. Uh, and I guess that's right to a certain degree. But you're first of all, you're following the form of the tune in most instances. And you're also following uh, the chord progression. So you're kind of weaving yourself a, through this uh, harmonic structure, but you are you are improvising it. And there's kind of common idioms that are used from time to time, although I kind of try to stay away from those as much as I can. But, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's a language. So you're, you're it's the same thing as, as Jim, it's the same thing as you do as a stand-up comic. I mean, you're making stuff up as you go along, and you're speaking the the English language, but you're thinking up a story as you go along. And you have the structure of the story, but you're not going to tell it the same way every time. Mm, so. no, I was drunk for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like jazz. <laughs> well, that happens sometimes, too. <laughs> All right, so famous players. Jim, Jim, I think, got a. he said Louis Armstrong and Dizzy Gillespie for trumpet. Also, Miles Davis would be one. Right? Louis Armstrong, because he was a very much a crossover artist, right? So he's... And you he's, keep saying yeah. Louis. So is it Louis or Louis? Louis. Louis. He says Louis, though. Oh, I was saying it's Louis. Uh, either, either one. Ah, okay. So he was... He was, I don't he, like he, I don't was, like the term satchmo because that's kind of weird. You know, musicians call him pops because he really kind of he fathered was, a lot of kids. <laughs> well, I could, that could be too. But, <laughs> but like, um, okay, but, so uh, he's like, "Hello, Dolly," and he Casablanca and all this type of stuff. Was that seen to be a bit silly outy to do that, or was that revered in the bit, uh, revered but he in still the sang thing. the hell out of it? So yeah. you know, yeah. What about saxophone players Bill, besides Bill Clinton? <laughs> uh, well, you've, in, in, uh, in early jazz, you've got people like Frank Teschemacher that came out of Chicago, and then the swing era, uh, Coleman Hawkins and Bed Webster and Lester Young. And then you get into bebop as Charlie Parker. And uh, Charlie Parker. then you get into cool jazz, the guy I worked with, with for 10 years jerry mulligan was a barry sax player mm -hmm. and uh stan getz and hard bop you got wayne shorter and joe henderson i mean each and you had michael brecker and fusion uh you got some great players now branford marcellus is a, a great player and uh, chris potter and you know there's tons okay, of great no, no, saxophone oh, oh. players it's a major instrument in jazz i'm not i'm not like this okay is clinton good no Okay. But he was actually he wasn't he wasn't bad he wasn't terrible, no. he, uh, and he had loved to play. And I've uh, met or I've talked to several people that met him, and they said he was a really cool guy. And they asked him one time who was his favorite saxophone player, and he said Joe Henderson. And jazz players immediately fell in love with Bill Clinton because I mean that's a guy that not. The general public doesn't really know about, but he's a great player and very inventive and just, just. Oh, he great, was great he player. was pandering to the jazz vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's a that's a big, uh, a big yeah, portion, a big yeah. part a big of the point. voting. You get the public, jazz yeah. vote, you get you, you get Louisiana. Yeah, that does it, man. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and is is Kenny G not considered good? Is he just like a hack? Kenny G can uh, play. I don't think he's know, jazz, I've, but he can I've, play I've, trumpet, I've, no saxophone. So. Yeah, he's a, he can play saxophone pretty well. Uh, it's just he. Well, let me put it this way. <laughs> uh, I I know some people that know him, and they say he's a really nice guy. Ah, uh, good. He's, <laughs> I, I will get it. He's he's known to be the best 
uh, celebrity golfer. Yeah, he's very good at golf. You like? Oh, yeah, he's, I heard he's that. close yeah, to being yeah. a pro golfer. Yeah. So yeah, we, we had him on our golf show. Yeah. So you, you go, got to give all yeah. respect to the Kenny G. And then you know, yeah, late yeah. at night, you light I've a few candles. You and he's given down. a lot of money to the jazz department at the University of Washington. So there you go. You know. Good guy. Uh, drummers. You said Matt Sorin from Guns N' Roses. Where's some drummers we should know? <laughs> Maybe a handful of drummers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Baby Dodds in early jazz was a great player. Uh, tons of players during the, the swing era. A bebop era, like I said, was partially started from a guy named Kenny Clark, just the rhythms he played on drums, and uh, Max Roach. And when you get into... Uh, later on, there's Elvin Jones who played with the John Coltrane quartet. Who I didn't, I mentioned John Coltrane. There is another what about, great, fantastic. Oh, John player. Coltrane, yeah, he was a saxophone. Well, and Tony Blake, Williams played Art with Blakey the Miles Davis drummer. Coltrane. Coltrane. That, that that was great. Is Art Blakey a drummer? I have an out. Yeah, Art Blakey yeah, had his own drum. band during the hard bop. He Chubby he was a Great player and great <laughs> band leader. What was Chubby Checkers? Was he rock? Was he jazz? What was Chubby Checkers? He was yeah, just doing, he was yeah, doing the twist early everywhere. early rock and roll, right? I, I, I don't know. He feels like he was, blues. he was twisting all over He's the place. Chubby he had that one song and it, he rode that fucking song forever. <laughs> when I was a kid, I remember. And we had, it was always like, and was, who was that guy who used to do Countdown? The, the Casey Kasem. Casey Kasem. Yeah. Casey Kasem always would wheel out Chubby Checker. Like Chubby Checker was a big fat bastard. He was always dead and he was still twisting around. He might might be still alive. <laughs> I don't think he is. Um, and it he cut, is. Give us a couple. Is he? Yes. Is. Chubby Checker still alive? I'm checking. I think he is. Oh, wow. What uh, about the Fat Boys? The Fat Boys are going to be dead because that was his backup band was the Fat Chubby Boys. Chubby Checker is still around. Uh, Chubby wow, Checkers okay. and the Fat Boys are <laughs> doing the twist. Um, Check all the Fat Boys. See how they're going. While we're doing that, can you give us just a, a handful of famous jazz piano players and trombone players? Not, not yourself, Dave. Uh, piano... Oh, wow. Jelly Roll Morton, uh, Father Hines, Art Tatum was fantastic. Mm. Uh, then you get into Teddy Wilson, who played with the Benny Goodman band. Then you get into uh, Bebop and Thelonious Monk and Bud Powell. Uh, then you get into Cool Jazz, uh, Dave Brubeck, that, that comes to mind. Uh, Dave Brubeck, uh, yeah, I saw him live. Definitely Herbie Hancock, McCoy Tyner, Keith Jarrett. Bill Evans. I great, thought, okay. great, you know, I, you know, I'm a terrible like a person because I thought Herbie Hancock was because uh, he didn't know uh, John Hancock's name. Uh, Will Farrell's <laughs> character in Tommy Boy. I thought he made up Herbie Hancock. <laughs> oh no! He, no, no. Herbie oh, Hancock. Farley, he's a yeah. great player, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Chris Farley. Chris Farley. Yeah. yeah. What did I say? Will he's Farrell. Like, Will oh, Farrell. Okay. So Chris Farley and Tommy Boy goes. I think you'll find it's a Herbie Hancock. Yeah. And then I did. And this. Uh, I've just learned. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the joke Those doesn't are jokes that jazz players get, and nobody else does, probably. Yeah, yeah um, that's, they always they always got these Chris Farley jokes. What was the guy? The Dave Brubeck. I saw him too. He's yeah, he's his song's very famous. You would know what's that one? Dun, 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 dun. Take five. Take five. I can't do it. You know it if you heard it. Take five. Take five. Take five. Uh, what do we got here? Famous jazz club. Jim said the Boom Boom Room. The Boom from... Boom Room. Oh, you, you didn't. You never got the trombone player. Oh, sorry. Yeah, trombone. Yeah. Besides oh, yeah. you, Dave. The famous trombone. <laughs> no one cares about the trombone, Dave. Drop down and push it onto everyone. So here's an interesting fact. Uh, the very first uh, black musician to be recorded is a guy named Kid Ori that played with Louis Armstrong quite a bit. Uh, but he he was a great player in the early jazz. And then you, in the swing era, you had Tommy Dorsey and uh, a guy named Bill Harris that came out of the Woody Herman band that kind of led to bebop. My, the guy I'm really basically coming from is J.J. Johnson, and he was in kind of the bebop era into the hard bop era. Uh, and uh, there's another guy named Wayne Henderson that I really, really dug and transcribed some things of his. What about Dylan, Shorty, Frank trombone Rosalino, Shorty? I feel like the trombone. There's a lot of really uh, uh, great trombone players. Trombone Shorty is a good player. He's uh, really good. Um, but there's guys like uh, Marshall Jilks and Ryan Keberly and John Fedchuk and, uh, you know, there's tons of great players uh, now. Okay, so if you play the flute, it's very easy to learn the saxophone because the fingering's basically the same. And then, and then even like going over to clarinets, a similar type of thing. Does the trombone... Um, 
parlay itself into other instruments or is it just trombone? Like, does it help you out with other instruments? Because I feel like it's the only real slide instrument. Am I missing something? No, that's that's right. You're you're right. You have to basically have, be a genius to play trombone because it's, it's a totally different yeah. thing. And I feel like it's but, a, I feel like it's a good instrument to be sarcastic. Like so, if like if if one of the oh, yeah, wah, if one wah, 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 yeah wah, 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 <laughs> and then like like if, like if a member of your band just gets dumped by his uh, girlfriend and then she leaves, you go yeah wah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a funny yeah. instrument. It's a good I mean, it's a good take the piss instrument. I walk yeah. by it and I kept my. I keep my trombone on a stand in the living room and I walk by and it's like, wow, I can't believe you pulled this off for a whole <laughs> career. <you know>? um, <laughs> and, it, and it is the motion of pulling it off. So. <laughs> I'll, yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> um, famous jazz club. Jim just said a bunch of things from movies. What are some famous jazz clubs? Uh, uh, Village boom. Vanguard in New York is, is a classic club. It's still open? Uh, or? Yeah, still open. Okay. In fact, there's a, a band I used to sub in uh, was led by Mel Lewis when I subbed in it, but it's called the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. They've played every Monday night there pretty much, and went, except for on the road since uh, the 70s. So mm. it, if you got to go someplace and want to hear a great big band, go to the Village Vanguard on a Monday night. It's a killer band. Is that where Woody um, Allen plays? Say, say what? Is that where Woody Allen plays? Uh, no, that was what was the name of that club? God, the local kindergarten, wasn't it? It was up, it was uptown <laughs> oh, someplace. Jesus. Uptown. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't off the top of my head. I don't remember. <laughs> Are there any? There was good a guy one? named uh, Vince <laughs> Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks, and he would uh, sit in with them sometimes. Are there any good clubs in L.A. Jazz clubs? I never hear of any. The Viper Room, the Baked Potato. Is there there not a lot, potato, of, yeah. a lot of people don't know this. That, baked potato. That, uh, mm -hmm. uh, River Phoenix, big jazz guy. Wait, what's the baked potato? How do you know about this? Uh, Has that been? It, yeah. And what, do they serve baked potatoes? They serve huge baked potatoes. It's, what? Is it, Wait, it's jazz and baked potatoes? Yeah. Why yeah. am I not going to this? I don't know. It's awesome. <laughs> it's a vegan bar. <laughs> it's, like all the the sour cream. it's like all the session musicians in town just play there every week. Oh, well, it's okay. awesome. Yeah, that's a great place. It's been a great place for a long time. All right, well, I'll go there. Um, There's a place called the Green Mill in Chicago that's a long, long 10-year uh, jazz club that's really cool. It's and, a great club. And in New Orleans, are there clubs or are they just everyone's performing? Well, there's tons of clubs in New Orleans, but I haven't been there since before Katrina, so I'm not yeah. sure what's... Oh, I, 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 actually, I, I actually went I, to one. I, I got a know. question. Okay, so uh, uh, Harry Connick Jr., right? He grows up in New, Lawn, uh, New Orleans, immersed in the music. Then he has like popular sort of uh, sonatry type albums. But I saw him in concert and he looked to me like he was an outstanding uh, jazz pianist. Um, Absolutely, is, he's, he, oh, he's he, really is, good. he is good. Okay, because I didn't know whether it yeah, was like really me good. going, "Oh yeah, that's a good one," because he was commercial, but he looked outstanding to me. No, he's great, and he's a really good band leader too. I knew the bass from bone player, and he was said it was really fun to work for. Mm. Uh, I know a good club. I, I just had to look it up. I was like, I went to one called Snug Harbor. That was a good one. That I went yeah, to. yeah. That's what I call my underwear. I've heard of that club. <laughs> Very All damp right. down there. Here's a part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our guests to give the us coming in. a fact that's something or a story, something obscure, so. interesting about this topic that guests can use to impress people. What do you got for us, Dave? Well, I got a story for you. Right. Um, I was in Chicago doing a gig and a friend of mine introduced me to a guy named Barrett Deems, who was this old drummer. And he played uh, with Louis Armstrong and his all-stars during the 50s. Uh, and they did a bunch of State Department tours, uh, you know, the kind of goodwill tours that was sponsored by the State Department. So one time they were coming back from one of those tours and they were in Idlewild Airport, you know, which is JFK, JFK now. and. Uh, this was during the Eisenhower administration. So they, they were, they were coming in and going going through customs, and all of a sudden, uh, Vice President Richard Nixon comes in with his entourage in the same place, and Nixon sees Louis Armstrong and goes over to him. And Nixon played a little bit of piano, so he thought of himself as a musician. He says, "You know, I really love your music. You know, I listen to you all the time, uh, and thanks a lot for doing the State Department." you know, tours, uh, you're doing good things for the country. And, uh, and then he finishes off and he says, if there's ever, ever anything I can do for you, Lewis, just let me know. 
So Louis Armstrong looks to me and says, well, you know, I got a lot of bags here. I wonder if you could just take this one bag through customs and that way I don't get charged more. So Nixon's no. kind of caught. And so he, he takes the bag through customs and Lewis picks it up afterwards after he gets out of customs. Well, you know, when you think about it, it's, 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 it's great because you got the white vice president carrying the bag of a black jazz musician. And wow. that's the bag where Lewis kept all of his weed. Yeah. Because <laughs> no, no, they're never going to check the, the vice president. Uh, Nixon, oh, yeah. I'm not a crook, carrying a bag of fucking weed through the airport, man. Uh, that's our best, that's the best one ever. Uh, um, uh, Dave, oh, that's my favorite one. Dave, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you um, sure. go, out and listen to some, go out and listen to some jazz people, some of the albums he recommended, and also listen to Dave's music. You can hear his albums, Journeys, National Pastime, Violin Memory, and so forth. If you go to Dave Glenn with two N's, DaveGlennMusic.com or OrangeArts.com. Thank you, Dave. Dave, absolute pleasure, Thank you. mate. Absolute pleasure. What, what a joy it was to have all. you on the podcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a podcast and someone says to you, uh, jazz was named after baseball, go, I haven't finished the video game. I don't know about that. <laughs> and walk away. Good night, Australia.